Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fearfully and Wonderfully Me, a podcast designed to help you become the leader you are destined to be. Today's episode is all about identity and specifically the level of attachment that we have to our identity or our identities, uh, multiple, could be, could be more than one, absolutely. So I wanted to drill down just a little bit um, into that. Now I speak to this in my, my most recent book, Fearfully and Wonderfully Me, Become the Woman You Are Destined to Be. And there's actually a chapter in there on creating your identity. And, you know, I speak to that kind of in depth in that chapter. Um, it's chapter 13 on self-worth because so much of our self-worth is wrapped up in our perception of our identity, right? The identity that we create for ourselves is based on our self-worth. And, you know, to understand that at a deep level, you really have to, you know, almost un understand, number one, our identity is largely created by accident, right? I don't think that most of us, I know I didn't certainly, spend much time early on in my career, early on in my life, um, even in teenage years where most of us are trying to, to figure out what we want to be when we grow up, right? But I don't think most of us intentionally create an identity for ourselves. Most of us, uh, much of our identity is heavily influenced, not determined, not determined, but heavily influenced by our circumstances that we find ourselves in, the people around us, um, what we go through as we grow up. That is a lot of what influences our identity. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's just simply a fact that our environment can affect us. And you've heard me speak many, many times to the things that happen to us, our circumstances or what we go through in life influences us but it doesn't determine us, right? It can influence us, but it's up to us to decide, is it going to influence us in a positive way and help us grow, make us stronger, make us better, or is it going to affect us in a negative way, right? That's the choice that we make. But mo most of the time, I think we don't spend enough time thinking about that identity that we create intentionally, consciously, or subconsciously. I think most of us create most of our identity or allow it to be created and influenced um, by accident, by just the things that, that happen as we grow up. For example, most, um, most of us tend to stay for the, mo for the majority of our adult lives or all of our adult lives, most of us tend to stay uh, firmly rooted in the religion in which we were brought up. Now, it's not unheard of for someone to, to grow up and decide to change religions um, or change faiths, if you will. Um, but, but the majority of us, for all intents and purposes, the majority of us don't. If you were raised in a Christian home and a, you know, a Christian faith, then you probably are still most likely a Christian in the Christian faith um, versus if you are raised up in a different faith, perhaps you were raised up as a Muslim, then, then you probably still have a foundation of faith based on that early, early influence. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just recognizing that much of who we are today in this moment was influenced and created not even without a, you know, even without us thinking about it, it was just not conscious. It's just that our identity is heavily influenced by the world we find ourselves in. So understanding that is the first step and, and then recognizing that we can intentionally create a different identity based on our core values. And that doesn't mean that the values that you have now are wrong or bad. That, that's not what I'm saying at all. It's just simply allowing you to recognize that you can create an identity that is based on your core values. And the reason that affects our self-worth so at such a critical level is because me, for example, you know, growing up as a sexual abuse victim and, and later being trafficked by my father and and all of the shame and trauma that, that came with that experience is I allowed that to influence my identity and my sense of self-worth as a, 
you know, a victim, a, a victim of something, a victim of circumstances. And then I would, you know, I would use that as an excuse to make poor choices. You've heard me talk before, um, if you've been listening to my podcast a, a while, that, that one of the coping mechanisms I had in my early teenage years was turning toward, you know, just horribly unhealthy food behaviors. You know, I would get a, a, a tub of cake frosting and I would eat it with a spoon, you know, a, a whole box of pound box of sugar and just get a spoon and I would just have that. And, I, you know, I would turn to that as as a comfort, as a coping mechanism, but that's a horribly unhealthy behavior. But see, I was allowing what I was going through to influence my sense of self-worth and my identity. And because of that, I was making poor choices, right? And that's just one example. We can go down a whole bunny trail of different examples of how our identity and our sense of self-worth affects the choices and habits that we create and make for ourselves. And my point here is there again is just to raise your level of awareness relative to where you are now and where you want to go. I want you to think about what your identity is. Has it been intentionally built and created by you or is it something that you've kind of just never questioned that perspective of your identity, that facet, if you will. Um, and that's okay, but just recognizing that maybe it's not serving you well. Um, I'm not saying you should rethink your religion necessarily, unless you are finding out that that's not fulfilling you in your spiritual dimension. And that, in that case, then maybe you do need to just take a step back and say, was this some part of my identity that just got created because of how I was raised? Or is this something that I've intentionally built for myself? And if so, where's the where's the disconnect, right? Um, so that's just one example. I mean, we could we could talk about it in so many different dimensions of life. A lot of us have just just an unconscious ad adaptation to the influences that were in our lives in our early years, whether that's political or religious or um, lifestyle choices like how we eat, things like that, right? You can see that if we're, if we're not intentionally thinking about and questioning the influences in our life and how they've affected our identity to this point, it's very easy for us to just, you know, automatically drift through creating an identity. And then suddenly we wake up one day and we aren't satisfied in some area of our life to, to a huge degree, right? And we, we wake up and it's that, that midlife crisis that, that is almost such a cliche, but the reason that that comes about to begin with is that someone has drifted through and they wake up middle of their life or maybe earlier, maybe later, but they wake up at some point and go, I'm not where I want to be in life. And, but they don't know how to fix it. They don't know how to correct that. They don't know how to, to intentionally change that identity. So I bring all of that up to, to say the question becomes, how attached are you to your identity? And the reason that's important is because perhaps that level of attachment is an unhealthy level of attachment. And um, if you are not familiar with the book, The Five Levels of Attachment by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr., um, it's, a, it's a great book that talks about the different levels of attachment that we can form to our sense of identity or something else. He uses the example in the book, and uh, I think it's pretty generic, so I'll, I'll share that with you, but he uses the example of a sports analogy. And he talks about a level one attachment is someone who's maybe not a soccer fan, but they go to a soccer game and they can just enjoy the game. Even if they're not a soccer fan, they can just enjoy the experience, you know, visit the concession stand, enjoy cheering with the fans, but they're really not attached to the outcome, right? They don't have any interest in one specific team winning over another. Well, level two, you might have that same person who's not a soccer fan and they go to the game and they watch the soccer game, but maybe this time one of the teams is wearing red jerseys and that sock and that fan or that a, a person attending the game says, you know what, I like red jerseys a little more than I like blue jerseys. So I'm going to cheer for the red team. But regardless if the, the red team wins or loses, it doesn't you know, destroy their day or their weekend. It's just they had just a little bit more attachment in the outcome of the game because they liked red better than blue. Well, at level three, uh, he talks about in the book, you start to call yourself a soccer fan and suddenly you are not just a soccer fan, but you are a specific team 
soccer fan. I don't even know any soccer teams um, to give you an analogy, but let's say there was a soccer team called um, the Cardinals, which I'm sure there probably isn't. So no comments on how I don't know sports and soccer. But um, maybe you you go to a soccer game and you're a soccer fan and you are a red team Jersey Cardinals fan. And so now you have formed a different level of identity around the outcome of the game because you are calling yourself, you are identifying some part of your identity as a specific fan of that particular team, right? So now you can go to the game and you can still enjoy it, but if your team loses, you start to feel like you've lost in some way. Right. It does kind of make you have a bad day. And, you know, maybe it doesn't disrupt your whole life, but man, you're just kind of down because your your sports team didn't win. And you start to adopt language like our team, um, you know, didn't get a fair call by the referee or they, the other team, played dirty against us or whatever. You, you start to see where I'm going. They, you, we, at level three level of attachment, we start to adopt the language and form some part of our identity as a, a, the fan of that specific team. Level four, a, a level of attachment and level five level of attachment, you take that to a much greater extreme. And he speaks to in the book, you know, at level five attachment is the fanatic fan who, you know, might get into a fight with an opposing team fan because the game didn't come out how they wanted. Or, I mean, we've it's unfortunate, it's horribly tragic, but we hear of people who commit suicide because their team you know, lost and their identity was so wrapped up in the success of that team. And this can play out in a lot of different ways, right? We can form a level of attachment to an identity as a sports fan or as a political party or as a specific religion, as a lifestyle choice, like being a vegan, for example. The problem is, is that number one, if we have an unhealthy level of attachment to some particular form of our identity, then when that fails us, and it will, unless your identity is created around lasting core principles and values, if you create some part of your identity around anything other than those lasting core principles and values, it will fail you at some point. And if we have an unhealthy level of attachment to that, then when it fails, it affects our sense of self-worth. We will judge ourselves. For example, if I had a very unhealthy attachment to calling myself a vegan, and then suddenly um, I indulged in a bowl of ice cream this weekend, now I would start to judge myself as, oh, I'm not a good vegan. I, you know, I totally failed. So you see how that can impact our sense of self-worth. Or perhaps we judge and extend judgment to others, right? If I identify with an unhealthy level of attachment to being vegan and I see somebody else having ice cream, then I start to judge them and criticize them based on my level of attachment to my identity, my lifestyle choices. So you see where that can create a lot of conflict, a lot of interpersonal conflict, a lot of personal, intrapersonal conflict, a lot of confusion. This is the person that has such an unhealthy level of attachment to their career that when they retire in a few months, they find themselves that life has no meaning, right? Because they had such a level of identity and attachment around that, that job or that role as a career, um, as a, you know, a CEO or a business leader or whatever it is that they did, right? Versus if they have a, a healthy level of attachment, a level one or level two, then they can say, you know what, that season is past. So it's not a bad thing to create an identity around some facet of our life or some perspective, the, the different hats that we wear, absolutely. But what I'm saying here is just think about the level of attachment that you have to each of those roles that you have in your life or the hats that you wear and make sure that it's a, a healthy level of attachment, right? And if it's not, then it's time to, to get out that journal and do some reflection and say, you know what, maybe I just need to drill down into why I've created such a deep level of attachment to begin with, and how can I turn that into a healthier level of attachment? Until next time. Start increasing your influence and maximizing your potential with Rhea's audiobooks. Available at audible.com, amazon.com, and iBooks.
please visit RiaStory.com to learn about Ria's books, resources, speaking, and training programs. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.